Welcome to another session. In this session, we'll discuss about black box test technique. So we are in chapter four, which is about test techniques. So black box test techniques, uh, understanding the black box test technique is very important, especially uh, for manual testers because they they see the product uh, outside. Uh, they see the product as a black box. They do not go into details uh, in the I mean in the code. Say so they do not uh, dig in the code uh, so in the black box the, there are different techniques uh, they should have understanding so they can apply these techniques they can find them more bugs easily uh, so this knowledge is very helpful for uh, also automators automation engineers usually go into uh, code and so uh, in the later on we'll discuss about the white box test techniques so white box test techniques are more important for automators because they uh, go into detail so they should know the white box test techniques so they can easy, easily apply those techniques uh, so they can do uh, white box testing they can do maximum coverage in this area but currently let's discuss uh, black box test techniques so in the black box techniques, test techniques, we have equivalence partitioning. Uh, we partition the inputs into equivalence. So we have valid values, uh, invalid partitions, valid partition, invalid partitions. So uh, invalid partitions are rejected and valid partition are accepted by the system. Then we have boundary value analysis. We have usually bug, uh, most of the bugs are in boundary, boundaries. So boundary value analysis is very important. Uh, so for example, if we have uh, input field which accepts uh, uh, digits from um, one to 19, then our boundaries will be one and 19. So we need to check those boundary. So uh, in uh, uh, then we have decision table testing. Uh, we sometimes boundary value analysis and partitions are helpful in uh, some scenario but decision tables are uh, usable, uh, very helpful in the cases and the requirement when we uh, when we have inputs in in form of decisions uh, so logic so th then we uh, partition the input into that group and test that accordingly then we have state transition testing we have states uh, on different states we test that those states uh, valid state invalid state so uh, so invalid states are rejected valid states are accepted system can go into different uh, states uh, then we have guard condition for example guard condition is the condition where we have one point where we transition can get into different directions for example in uh, in the left right and right wrong sense so then we have use case testing we have actor system so actor interacts with the system we need to test those identify those use case scenarios in this case so equivalence partitioning i have discussed equivalence partitioning are also called the class partitioning ECP is a software testing technique that divides the input data of the software into its partition all and so in this case uh, in the test cases are designed to cover maximum partition at at, uh, at least once so uh, if we say that we have did 100% test coverage then mean we have covered each partition so um, Equivalence partitioning device data into partition, you know, uh, so valid uh, values are uh, valid uh, values are the values that system should accept. So invalid will be rejected. Uh, so to achieve 100% coverage with this technique, test cases must cover all uh, identified partitions. So let's uh, me it's let's give you an example here. You can see the example. Uh, for example, we have input field which accept digit from 6 to 10 so in this case 6 to 10 our valid partition uh, so invalid partition will be uh, digits less than 6 and uh, digits greater than 10 so in this case uh, 0 to 5 is an invalid partition uh, 11 to 14 is invalid partition uh, so so it uh, 6 to 10 is valid partition uh, it will test all the test cases present in this partition and so uh, let me show you one more example 
and here you can see we have digit, uh, field accepting it is 1 to 15 <coughs> so 1 to 15 is valid partition we have divided uh, <coughs> into partitions so valid invalid so uh, digits less than one then we have the invalid partition then we have so if we say we uh, i have i have done 100 percent test discovery then uh, one test share case will be picked uh, from invalid partition for example in this case we can pick uh, two two will be tested uh, in in that field then we can test uh, one digit from uh, invalid greater than 15 for example 17 can be picked and then uh, one digits can be picked from invalid for example less than one we can pick zero in this case we need three test cases to have 100 percent test coverage uh, suppose uh, as you can see the example an integer field shall contain values between and including 1 to 15 by equalize uh, by applying equivalence partitioning what is the minimum number of test cases required for maximum coverage so in this case uh, we will have three as i have discussed earlier so in the equivalence partitioning uh, let me show you one more example an integer field shall contain values between and including 1 to 15 by applying equivalence partitioning which of the following is a valid uh, collection of equivalence classes for a given uh, scenario so in this scenario uh, our valid collection is 1 to 15 uh, so uh, so in this case less than 1 1 to 15 more than 15 so in this case we have um, by equivalence, equivalence which of the following is a valid collection of equivalence classes so equivalence classes we have three three you know we have less than one one to fifteen more than fifteen so in this case the uh, all others answers are wrong so let me discuss another uh, boundary value analysis so as i have discussed uh, boundary value analysis in extension or equivalence partitioning so boundary values analysis can be applied at our test level so we can apply at journal level integration system and acceptance level very important because most of the bug relies in the boundaries this technique is generally used to test a requirement uh, that call for a range of numbers including dates and times so we uh, because we need to identify the boundaries so we need these usually include uh, numbers dates times and so on so we can test uh, let me show you one example of a boundary analysis case suppose we have field which accept the age uh, in this case suppose a field accept the age between 18 to 56 so in this case uh, we have three uh, uh, classes uh, 18 to 56 and more than 56 uh, another um, class and less than 18 in another class we have three classes then uh, uh, we need to identify the boundaries in, uh, in this boundaries values are 18 we have 18 in the boundary minimum is 18 okay uh, then in valid uh, uh, class we have two values in the valid class um, valid partition and then we have maximum 56 in uh, maximum then from invalid we have 57 less than 18 is 17 then we have four in this case four values from boundary 17 18 56 and 57 so uh, suppose there is an, another example which in food accepts uh, 13 digits so, so we can say um, 6 to 12 are valid characters so more than 12 characters will be uh, will lie in the invalid class and more uh, less than 6 uh, will lie in the invalid class so in this case our boundaries will be f uh, 5 6 12 and 13 4 in this case this will be 4 let me show you an example as you can see the example a test field in an application accepts input as range of user here the values allowed to be accepted by the field is between 18 to 30 18 to 30 years inclusive of both the values by applying boundary value analysis uh, what is the minimum number of test cases required for maximum coverage so minimum number of test cases mean we need to test uh, 
uh, we need to run at least one task uh, from um, from uh, partitions so in this case um, we have valid uh, class 18 to 30 less than 18 17 then greater than 30 31 then we in this case we have 4 um, 17 80 30 31 so 4 will be uh, correct answer so we need uh, by applying boundary balance uh, minimum number of test cases 4s are required for maximum coverage so in this case we need to test uh, 4 uh, we will test 4 test cases uh, will be run so then we can have do we have covered the maximum we did maximum coverage boundary value analysis uh, another example you can see a tax field in the application accepts input as a range of user here the values allowed to be accepted by the field is between 18 to 30 years inclusive of both the values based on the boundary value analysis uh, which of the given option consists of valid collection of boundary values so in this case we have 17 you can see 18 30 and 31 as have discussed earlier so boundary value analysis another example a tax field in the application accepts input as a range of as age of user here the values allowed to be accepted by the field is between 18 to 30 years inclusive of both the values by applying equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis which of the given option consists of valid boundaries values and invalid uh, equivalence class so we need to identify the valid boundary uh, valid boundary values and valid equivalence values so in this case it will be 18 30 and 25 you know the valid and uh, the valid class we have 18 to 30 so 18 13 will be included and then we have 25 all the others uh, options are wrong so let's discuss about decision table testing so in the decision tables uh, are good way to record complex business rule that the system must implement mm -hmm. so in the decision table we have table uh, requirements form into uh, tables when creating decision table the test identify the conditions often the inputs and the resulting actions uh, often the outputs of the system so test and need to identify those uh, conditions from the requirements uh, from uh, it may be user story or uh, SRS document it can be applied to all situation in which the behavior of the system in software system depends on the combination of condition at any test level it also helps to uh, finding any gaps in the requirements so in the decision table we can also identify the gaps uh, missing requirements can are identified decision table captures system requirement that contains logical conditions mm. uh, so let me show you an example here you can see what is the expected result uh, for each of the following test cases uh, so a city bank card member holding a silver room b non city bank uh, member holding a platinum room so in this case we have two conditions um, condition city bank card member uh, in type of room we have two type of room silver platinum we have four rules so in this case we apply the four rules uh, so in actions we have offer upgrade to gold luxury in offer upgrade to silver so uh, so, the, so the question is uh, a uh, so correct answer will be offer upgrade to gold here you can see we offer upgrade to gold yes and uh, don't offer any upgrade here you can see the we don't offer any upgrade no so this is the uh, correct answer uh, here you can see an example given the following decision table which of the following test cases are expected uh, result is valid here we have conditions age uh, insurance class so we have actions premium access so in this case we have age less than 21 uh, 21 to 29 30 to 50 and more than 50 years the four rules are applied uh, insurance class are a b c and d so in the premium we have hundred dollars 90 70 and 70 so uh, so in this case uh, you can see 23 years old 
in insurance class A. So in this case, rule one, you can see, uh, sorry, in, okay, rule two, rule two, yes. Uh, 23 year old insurance class A, premium is 90, yes, and excess is 2,500. Uh, so rule two is applied and this is correct. Uh, second one is wrong because 51 years old in in insurance class c 51 yes uh, rule 5 and uh, class c yes and excess is uh, 500 which is wrong in this case excess is 1000 third one is 31 years old in insurance class b you can see the 31 lies in the 31 lies in the rule 3 and uh, uh, class is B, yes. X premium is 70, yes. And excess is 2500. Excess is wrong, okay. Four option 43 years old insurance class 3. Uh, 43 lies in the four rule 3, okay. Class C, yes. Uh, premium is 100. Uh, premium in this case is 70, which is wrong. So we have uh, option 1 is correct in this case so state transition testing is used for menu based application and is widely used within the uh, embedded software industry so in the embedded software industry you know we have devices which goes uh, from one state to another it can be on off another state so for, and that can be fault state and so on the technique is used suitable for modeling a business scenario having specific state or, uh, or for testing a uh, screen navigation so uh, the concept of state is abstract so in this case uh, is it abstracts a word it may be uh, a few line of code or entire business process so uh, we can say that uh, we have following state so that can be business we, we may be referring to business uh, one business process we may be referring to small code logic so in the guard condition we have if the same event can result in two or more different uh, transitions from the same state that even may be qualified as guard condition here you can see we have two actions so from this we can go uh, from action uh, towards action one and, and zero so in the state transition uh, if we have states for example we have ice can go into water and water can go into vapor then from ice to water water to back to ice water to vapor vapor to ice then this state you know, we can test these transitions so suppose uh, uh, here is an example uh, based upon the given uh, state transition diagram which are the following is case invalid so even you need to identify the invalid you can see we have s1 state s2 and s3 so x1 state is off state. so we have device which is in off state that can go into on state then from on to off then from way and it is on then it can get into false state then the false state we have s3 state when if the device in s3 state is in a false state so this can not go back to, to an on state so uh, our invalid option is uh fault is on okay from fault to on we cannot go from fault to on so this is a uh, correct option when we talk about use case testing we have actors uh, and uh, we have system so we identify the actors uh, and uh, how they do interactions with the system so in this case our actors can be a service uh, for example authentication service so google service for example google authentic authentication service can be we have identity providers uh, credit card payment service uh, so then can be uh, we have customer users so on so in the system for example we have online shopping system we can mm, customer uh, interacts with the system it can view the items uh, it can include will include items can make purchases from system can do complete checkout in this process uh, system interacts with services uh, for some of uh, for authentication for identity provider for credit payment services so interacts with third party service to uh, complete to get the payment from mm, from payment uh, providers so 
in this case uh, we can do use case testing so in this use case testing uh, we do uh, we can identify the uh, we coverage for example and we in this case we have identified uh, total number of use cases so um, when we say that um, coverage can be measured by percentage of use cases behavior tested divided by total number of use cases behavior normally expressed as a percentage so each use case specifies some behavior you know that a subject can perform in collaboration with one or more actors interaction may game represented uh, graphically by workflow activity diagram or business process model so we have different ways to uh, do use case testing here you can see uh, we have atm scenario for example in this uh, we have actor uh, that can be a uh, customer interacts with the atm atm is a system so uh, actor inserts the card uh, system validates and asks for pin so in in this process uh, system uh, can reject the card card is not valid and display the message uh, with rejecting the card so system uh, when user enters the pin uh, here user mean actor enters the pin uh, system validates the pin and if, if the system um, uh, is not able to validate that pin uh, and user provides the invalid pin three times and then system is uh, obliged to eat that card and uh, will go to exit exit state will display the message and so on uh, so if uh, everything is okay then transaction is successful and uh, user can withdraw the amount so this is the atm use case scenario here you can see the example uh, which of the following statement about the benefit of deriving test cases from use cases are true and which are false here you can see we have four options a, a, we have a b and c d here one a is uh, deriving the test cases uh, from use cases helpful for system and acceptance testing yes this is true deriving test cases uh, from use cases is helpful uh, only for automated testing no this is wrong uh, de deriving test cases uh, from use cases is helpful for component testing wrong deriving test cases uh, from use cases is helpful for integration testing yes that's correct so in this case a and d are true b and c are false okay uh, with this i will come to the end of this session uh, so this is very important techniques to remember uh, so uh, this is actually this is what theoretical concept but when you go into real testing you will identify different tech uh, you apply these techniques you will be able to identify different bugs and then you can report that bugs so mastering these techniques is very important especially um, both for a white box tester and black um, black box tester so uh, thank you very much uh, see you in other session